Hello everyone and welcome to the Ghost Players Report. I am John Doe right here in Tokyo, Japan. Okay, now as we look at stateside and America's um, quasi or maybe full on, depending on how you look at it, government shutdown, we find the situation is quite interesting and it does relate to some very serious issues that continue to become a potential problem. Now, as we know, the uh, political class in D.C. are still sending fat in happy, while the rest of the American population is slowly but surely, and already to some extent, losing many vital, critical government services that are essential, not only operate the country, but to provide things the people absolutely need and to even function. One of those things relate to nuclear power. Now, the Nuclear Regulatory Agency very recently uh, has said that it expects to furlough some 3,600 employees at the close of business this coming Thursday, which is very, very soon in America. Um, Thursday, actually, here in Tokyo, at the time of this recording, is only in a few hours. But that will be, there's a 12 or 13 hour delay when America catches up to us. Uh, they said that they'll have to do this if the House and, Con and the Senate have not been able to pass a budget to restart the government. Now, if you look at what is the total number of employees at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, it currently stands at 3,916. That is permanent, the permanent workforce. The temporary workforce stands at 235, giving a total workforce of 4,151. So, when we look at they're going to cut 3,600 employees is basically shutting them down. But oh no, um, the, let me find this here. Okay, now the NRC spokesman, Elliot Banner, commented on this and he tries to put a happy face. And here's what he says. He says, um, we are going to make sure that we continue our oversight of the plants because the resident inspectors will be on duty and we are prepared to respond to an emergency on short notice. Really? Really, Mr. Branner? All right, now we know what a resident inspector is. That's someone who's actually at the plant itself. Now, every nuclear power plant typically has at least one of these people. Now, their job is to sit there and basically watch it. All right? That's what they do. Now, when you are gutted with your workforce, what really can you do if you are that resident inspector? Something goes wrong with that plant and there's an emergency. You can't call on the NRC workforce to be able to jump into action. What, do you, what this person can do is contact the commission. Now, the commission will still be there. They won't be furloughed. They basically can't. He can call them and tell them, hey guys, we got a problem. But what can the commission really do about it? They can't call their experts out. They're furloughed. They're locked out. What they can do is request these workers come in and do their job unpaid. Now, these workers may or may not go ahead and come in. You can only imagine the anger that these experts who work for the NRC is going to feel. So there's no guarantee they're going to come in, despite how serious any emergency could be. So that's a risk. A risk that he's really not explaining here. But he goes on... We have a bit more information here. 
Now I say that they're going to keep the 300 essential personnel who would stay on uh, includes about 150 of those so-called resident inspectors. Now he said they also they say they also include employees who support emergency response. Now, I don't know how many employees they can keep for emergency response there. I mean, what are you talking about here? Um, the people who man the phones? Um, the people at the front desk? I mean, really, you've gutted your workforce. You have maybe over a little bit over a thousand people? You may be able to call those people into action. But what if you have a situation at more than one plant? Yeah. Then you're in an issue there. Right? We go down further. We have a little information here by um, Mark Santoris. Now, I probably just destroyed his name there. I do apologize. Now, he's the um, agency's executive director for operations. And he said it's generally operated normally. They can generally operate normally using carryover funds. So they have enough money you know, to, to keep going on really a skeleton crew here. But he said it cannot continue beyond midweek. All right, so they're, they're okay now. But after they hit that Thursday, Friday, they're not going to have the money. That's when those guts, gutting of the workforce is going to happen. Okay? Now, nuclear industry watchdogs said that furlough a serious cause for concern. We look up to uh, Mart excuse me, Ed Lehman. Now, he is a senior scientist with the Union of Concerned Scientists. All right. He said, yeah, I'm worried. It's not good for anyone, and it's certainly not good for the agency that needs to safeguard our nuclear power plants against accidents and, and terrorism. And it's certainly not good for the American people. If there's an emergency, of course, They'll call more people back, but it's just counterproductive to go through the motions of furloughing a lot of people. Now, he's, again, like we just mentioned, he's assuming that workers will actually come in. That's not a guarantee at all. There's no guarantees workers would be able to do that, would agree to that. Now, I believe, I'm not sure here, that Congress did... A, agree to pay furloughed workers when whenever the government does restart I, I, I can't really tell you when I assume they're not going to let this go on too long but they could but here's a problem we're having here you know now if they're not all that concerned at the NRC itself and you know they're they're hoping that nothing happens a little bit more insight here. Now, earlier this year, the former chairman of the NRC, that would of course be um, Gregory Zasko, has said that all 104 nuclear reactors currently operational in the U.S. have irreparable safety issues and should be taken out of commission and replaced. Now, the comments, he said these during the um, Cambridge International Nuclear Apology Policy Conference. <coughs> um, now, this is, they claim this is highly unusual for someone like that to come out and say this. Let's, let's just give a quote here about exactly what he said. He said, I was just thinking more about the issues. And watching as the industry and the regulators and the whole Nuclear Safety Commission can, community continues to try to figure out how to address these very, very difficult uh, problems, which were made more evident by the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident in Japan. He said continuing to put Band-Aid on Band-Aid is not going to fix the problem. 
Now, he also says, U.S. nuclear energy facilities are in grave danger of failure. And you have the furloughed workers. And you have nuclear power plants who that are serious risk here. Anything can happen at any point in time. And no one's exactly sure when or if something will happen. And you shut down the government with this type of thing going on. It's just a good sign, okay? A clear sign that, you know, you have these libertarians. And I'm sorry to say this, but you also have these anarchists who believe that we should say the hell with it and transition directly from a highly structured government apparatus directly almost to almost, little almost no government and I think that everything's going to be okay. Sorry to break it to you, but it won't be okay. The U.S., United States, a highly organized, highly complex country. And all these government agencies are in fact necessary, okay? You've got to have these operating. Now, I know we get into a capitalist state and how you want to burn it down and crush it. Excuse me, it's a little hot in here. Think about that for a second. If everything I've just pointed out here, I'm going to burn it all down, man, suddenly overnight, to shut this government down and push it to the point to where it can't function. And you got all these nuclear reactors sitting there in the United States. You're not thinking this through. And the extreme right-wing faction of the Republican Party known as the Tea Party are the ones leading this charge. And you can see how insane they are. They're not thinking this through at all. They're using zero logic here. They're not really taking into account the consequences of continuing to keep the U.S. government shut down in the manner that it's shut down. Now, of course, the, the active frontline military is full up and running. Critical continuation of government uh, operations are still up and running. You know, the political class are still getting paid, and they're still sitting there like this, you know, playing their games up on Capitol Hill. Well, things like this are happening. So all of you out there are cheering this, and I think this is funny. I think this is cute. You know, or you libertarians are saying, yeah, keep it shut down for a while, man. The government's too big anyways. Hell, it'll save us some money. No. It doesn't work like that. And you see the American people, they don't have an alternative system to replace the government if it cannot function anymore. Now, will it be pushed all the way? You know, I highly, highly doubt it. All right? For one important reason here. You have this debt ceiling issue coming up, right? Now, America has to be able to pay its debt back, which it can't. And it doesn't make an effort to. What it does is pay its interest. And that keeps all their debtors at bay. Pay the interest on it, they're happy. But if they can't do that, they can't even pay interest? Yeah, things get really bad. So my suggestion is, America, get your shit together. Stop playing like this. Think about it, okay? Think about if you have a serious incident at one of your nuclear power plants. One of those reactors. And your agency that's responsible for handling it can't. They're paralyzed. What do you think is going to happen, America? Who's going to be there? Who is going to be there? So, I'm giving you a few things to think about, okay? Now, I'll put some 
links in the description box below so you can reference some of these things. And um, it's the first time you've ever seen this channel, if you've ever seen me, ever seen one of my videos, please subscribe. You get lots of cool stuff like this. You get video reports, from time to time maybe an interview. You get on the street stuff. You get protest vids. Uh, plus a few surprises from time to time. So until next time, this is me, John Doe, in Tokyo. Check it out.